Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on pretest, post-test analysis using Excel. So I'm using Excel 2010 here for this demonstration. And to start, I want to show you how to activate the analysis tool pack. If you go to the data ribbon, you'll see to the right here I have data analysis tools. If you don't have this on your ribbon, you'll go to File, Options, Add-ins. You'll select Analysis Tool Pack from the list box up top. And make sure that where it says Manage down here, there's Excel Add-ins. Hit Go, and you'll select Analysis Tool Pack. As you can see, I already have it selected. And hit OK. And then this will appear for you. So here is a set of fictitious data I've arranged for this example. And this is a common pretest, post-test design. You have in column A uh, your group or your independent variable. This is one independent variable with two levels. You have 20 participants in the control and 20 participants in the treatment. Then you have your pretest scores and your post-test scores. So let's assume for this example that you have a specific treatment you're using to address symptoms of depression. And your instrument is designed so that a lower score indicates fewer symptoms of depression. So what you would like to see is you'd like to see your treatment group uh, drop from the pretest score to the post-test score, indicating that the participants in the treatment group overall had fewer symptoms of depression. So what I did here, this is the data that you would have from your uh, data gathering stage. All this is what you would have. You'd have obviously your groups and then you'd have your pretest scores and your post-test. I added this column difference because this is how we'll be analyzing uh, this data using this column. And this is a fairly straightforward formula. It's the pretest score, in this case B2 for this cell, minus the post-test score. So a positive value in the difference indicates that that person had uh, fewer symptoms. A negative score would mean that that participant uh, had more symptoms. So as you can see, in the, just looking at the data before the analysis, there's a mixture in the control of positive and negative. And as you look down at the treatment, there's also a mixture, but there's fewer negative. So right away, looking at this data, uh, it's somewhat clear that there's going to be uh, a finding that the treatment group had better results, but we don't know that without running analysis uh, for certain. So what we'll do here to analyze the difference column along the, the two levels of independent variable is we'll go and have another worksheet called results and this is fairly straightforward I set it up as control and treatment in columns and this is this uh, A2 the formula is just the pretest post-test worksheet and cell D2 and then it's auto filled down. So I'm going to clear this out. Just show you how I did it very quickly. So control. Go over to the difference. And hit enter. And then simply auto fill. And you do the same thing to populate the treatment data. Uh, of course that starts at D22. 
So that starts uh, here. So now you have two columns. One is the differences seen between the pretest and the post-test in the control group, and the differences seen between the pretest and the post-test in the treatment group. So now we're going to move to the data analysis. So we'll click on data analysis in the data ribbon. We're going to select ANOVA single factor and click OK. And this is what this dialog will look like by default. The input range will be A1 through A or through B21 on this worksheet. The grouping will be by columns. The labels are in the first row. That's the control and treatment labels in the first row, so we want to check that box. We're going to set the alpha at 0 0.05 or 5%, and then we're going to uh, select an output range. Notice when I click output range, it moves back up here to input range. So you have to click back into uh, the output range text box. And I'm going to select D3. So once everything's configured uh, properly, click OK. And here are the results uh, from this ANOVA. So looking at the descriptive statistics, you can see that the sample size is identical for both the control and treatment groups. And the sum of the control group is 18. So there was an improvement overall in the control group because 18 is a positive number. However, there was a much larger uh, difference, uh, improvement in the treatment group. So then moving to the results of the ANOVA, we're interested in the row labeled between groups. And remember, ANOVA is testing to see if there's a statistically significant difference between groups. In this case, the control and the treatment group. The null hypothesis here would be that there is no difference between the control and treatment group. And the alternative hypothesis would be that there is a difference. Now remember when we were setting up the ANOVA, the alpha was set at 0 0.05. And we see here that the p-value is roughly 0 0.04. So the alpha is set at 5%, and the result returned from the ANOVA is 4%. So in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis because there is a statistically significant difference between the control group and the treatment group. There is only a 4% chance that we would observe these values through random error alone. Now, if this p-value had exceeded 5%, we would accept the null hypothesis. So just a quick overview on one worksheet for uh, pretest, post-test analysis. You set up your independent variable with your levels, your pretest and post-test scores, and then insert a column that calculates the difference. Move those differences over or connect them over to another worksheet. And then run a single factor ANOVA. And then interpret the between groups row by looking at the p-value and comparing it to the p-value that was set when the ANOVA was configured. If the p-value is lower, you reject the null hypothesis because there is a statistically significant difference between the groups, and if the p-value is higher, then you accept the null hypothesis, and we assume that there is no difference between the two groups. I hope this video on pretest and post-test analysis using Excel was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.